Bree, what are some ways you have learned to be a good manager as an ENTP? And I might add ENTP female, because that's different than an ENTP male. Yeah, there are, there are differences. Um, I would say the first bit of wisdom from an ENTP manager is um, our ability to recruit and thinking about recruiting all the time. Um, you know, a lot of people like to think they can do everything on their own. The thing that I've learned is I can't. <laughs> In fact, I can do very little on my own. I like to think of myself as more of a conductor or a fairy godmother. So something with it, like I have a stick in my hand, but I don't want to beat you with it. I want to create magic with it. Okay. I want there to be an orchestra. I want to find the best tuba player, the best violinists, and I want them to create beautiful music together. So as a manager, I'm constantly looking for the best people. Um, I'm not typing them right away. I'm looking for the best person for the job. And then I use type to then help manage them. So once they become, you know, I'm, I'm hiring them. And usually in the hiring process, I will ask their type just out of curiosity if mm -hmm. they know it, um, usually on the first interview. Um, if they don't know it, no big deal. I'm not mm -hmm. going to push them into taking a test before I hire them. I right. literally look for the best people. So um, my first word of wisdom is hire the best people, type them, and then come to them as who they are um, and not um, try to pick people based on type. Mm -hmm. You know, I only want this type of manager or whatever. <laughs> you will find there are people who tend to be better at certain jobs and um, that'll just naturally happen. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're picking the best people, you're going to find the, the type cluster. Yes. The second word of wisdom as an ENTP manager is like organization and delegation. It can be a huge challenge for ENTPs. Oftentimes we want to just do it ourselves. Our TE, um, extroverted thinking, as many of you know, is in the slot, which is the which Senex slot, as they would say. And how I find that coming out is like, um, sometimes I'll be like, hey, you're an idiot because you don't know how to do this, you know? And um, so you become condescending or yep. a witch. Mm -hmm. And as a female manager, the worst thing you can do is come off as a witch because then yeah. you get that label mm -hmm. um, with the B word instead. Right. And uh, <laughs> we, we all know that no one wants to work for that person. So um, what I have done is instead, I'm really careful about how I... Um, record all my processes using Google Docs. Mm. Um, I have almost like a Wikipedia playbook of how to do everything. And then I make sure as I record my processes, I create videos, step-by-step um, -step how to's. Nice. Um, and then I also have other um, types who I know are a little bit better at, you know, thing, finding things I miss. For instance, right. our ESFJ CFO. <laughs> he will find everything I've missed. Um, <laughs> and it's great, by the way, you yeah. want that. A lot of people resent it, mm -hmm. don't. Lean into it, they're making you better. And that's one of the other pieces of advice is stop resisting the types that, you know, sometimes that can aggravate us. Come to them as they are. Realize that they have superpowers you don't. Utilize them for where they're good. And then when you know they're kind of getting out of their lane, you know, kind of manage that appropriately. As an ENTP manager, I, I find that I have three roles. I'm a coach, so right. I'm constantly watching people and making small adjustments, and you have to be thinking that way. You're a leader, which means leading by example and doing everything yourself um, before you pass on to people so you're not a hypocrite. Right. And you understand how and why. And then um, you're also a manager. And that's the hardest one is actually managing because that's the type, like you need to be detail oriented and, you know, you need to be a little more stickler and disciplined. Mm -hmm. And that's where I don't have that ability. So I'd say me as an ENTP manager, managing is my worst aspect. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. No, that's, that is funny though. I mean, like everyone has the capacity to be a manager. And I just think like, the ENTP, I do not think I know any in my life that are managers. So it's like, I really wanted to hear that um, from you. Now, let me, something that you've mentioned at the beginning um, that it's where, you know, we're kind of in the type community, we're all kind of bored with like, yes, we're bored with the idea of like, you can't use it to hire, which is totally fine. Do you ever think of, I have an idea of the type of person that would be good at this job. I'm going to ask them type related questions like that will give me an answer that would show this is probably the type. Like if I need an introverted sensing type, I'm gonna ask them a question that an introverted sensor would be like, 
nail it. But someone that would be like, have an introverted sensing is they're inferior, like an NE type like yourself, they would struggle with like, well, I, they, they would fumble. Can you use interviewing and type and combine those? Yeah. And I would obviously suggest it. Um, If you're hiring, I work for an outsourced CFO firm and we have bookkeeping and accounters, controllers, CFOs. Mm -hmm. Your CFO is way more likely to be an N type and your bookkeepers are way more likely to be an S type, SJ type. And um, you're just going to see that and it's going to come up when you, when you naturally start building your scripts for interviewing. And Mm -hmm. so I think it just, when you know that a role requires a specific type of personality and I mean, Mm -hmm. bookkeepers, they like looking at numbers and they Mm -hmm. like fixing numbers and they enjoy it. And I'm going to ask if they enjoy that type of work, if they're doing it every day. (laughs) So I think it's just naturally going to be a part of the process. If you understand type, just weave it into a way that gets you the right person and you don't have to get caught up in like discrimination or any stuff like that. So now typing people in the type community is just fun because we like to type everyone. We like to type celebrities, athletes, historical people, um, non like fictional characters. Should we be trying to like type celebs, athletes, famous people? Because my thought before you answer is just that a lot of these people have images and branding and are actors and they're actually not even close. They're not, they're typed so wrong or they've been acting for so long. They don't even know what their self, like who they are. What do you say to that question? I love this question because it's, it's kind of, it is a difficult question. One, I'll start with intention. Like what is the intention of your typing the person? I think oftentimes we type someone in order to understand ourselves better or recognize a part of ourselves in another person, in which case I think that that's a good part of the process. You should be trying to understand who you are better through relating to people. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is that oftentimes, you know, the way that people are coming up, you should be showing all cognitive functions. And oftentimes I'll be like, oh, look, I just saw FI. And you're like, well, that was FI actually in their shadow. They were in a defensive position, right. but most people don't have the sense of even knowing the how it works well enough to be able to take a step back and be like, oh, well, that is that it was just showing up in this part of themselves. So I think that we have to be careful about making assumptions when we type people, especially when you go on some of these websites and you see celebrities being typed and then the celebrity themselves post what they are on Twitter and it's completely different. Mm -hmm. And so now you have to ask yourself, and this, this comes up a lot. Well, who's right? The person themselves or the person typing them. And now you're, now you're asking yourself, well, does this person know themselves? And oftentimes the person doing the typing becomes arrogant. Well, of course, I know the system better than they know yeah. themselves. And I think that's pretty arrogant. How mm-hmm. can you watch a couple interviews with someone and say you know someone? That person mm-hmm. has been themselves their whole life. <laughs> they have an inner monologue happening, especially right. if they're an introvert. Yeah. Um, introverts, in fact, young sighted are harder to type because they do have that inner monologue and you're only seeing their second function. Right. So I think it's best to come to someone and ask them who they are. Just ask, hey, what have you typed as? And then I think, as you said in a recent interview, what comes confusing is if someone types as two different types and now they're going back and forth. And oftentimes those two types don't even look alike. So mm. why, why are they, you know, I'm an INFP and an INFJ. Uh, they're different. <laughs> uh, so I think... Um, this is where hiring a coach like yourself can yeah. be helpful in that guiding process and figuring out, because if you want to figure out your type, you really need an expert to sit there and ask you the right questions and observe you. And together you come up to that conclusion. Yeah. And that's, that was addressed in an interview that I just released today, which is like, people forget that like the most important part about working with the professional is that the feedback session, like just because the, the indicator says that you're this, like, well, let's confirm it. And then also we need to talk to people that know you and like your mother or your dad. They'll yeah. say, oh, no, like, ob- so you get like a 360 feedback. So that, okay, this is what I am. I think it's confirmed all the, my whole life I've known myself to be this. So I think that argument should just be put to bed. Did this you have is- anything else to say on that? Yeah, since you're the ghost of young, I'm going to bring up this point. Um, 
Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> so in, in Jung's day, Freud and psychoanalysis, you only came to the patient as they were in your session. Well, Jung broke that rule big time. We know his relationship with Tony Wolf went beyond his sessions. And what he said is, you have to observe patients outside because who they're coming to you is persona. They're showing you one side of themselves. And really it does take a 360 degree view of the person from other people's observations. So I do think having another observer and being able to ask, like you said, well, what does your mom see? I often wonder, I don't even know that I could type my own mother because I only see her in the mother daughter dynamic. Like what is she like with her friends when I'm not there? Right. It's kind of creepy to think about, how your parents are when you're not around like they're actually like real people <laughs> no okay so relationships and this is all this is a great place to apply type but where you know someone dating an entp how does someone date an entp and what should they know going into that to that date or that relationship very carefully okay Okay, my observation, and I am an ENTP, and I've also dated male ENTPs. Um, I think ENTPs have a kind of long gestation period. So that means women are going to mature faster. We're still slow. Um, men are even slower, like really slow. Sorry, ENTP males. Some of you like mature a little bit slowly. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm with you. I was there with you. Like I look back now and I'm like, whoa, I was way behind on some of these emotional maturations. It's okay. Right. Um, that being said, um, we are curious. That is, I'd say one of our number one, the number one things is that we are constantly curious. My current partner is an INTJ and I love the way his curiosity shows up because it shows up way different than mine. Mm -hmm. Mine is always like, how is that? How does that work? And his is always like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's always, it always makes mm -hmm. me take kind of take a step back and be like, Oh, he thinks so much differently than I do. This is an, a chance for me to kind of grow. Um, but I like INTJs because they're curious. There are some types who are less curious and I don't think I could have long-term partnership with them because it would, I would get bored. Um, and so for me, I like people who are naturally curious and I think all types can be curious. Um, but some do show up more curious than others. Okay. So what would be like an example of a good first date for an ENTP versus a bad first date? Like, so ENTPs are pretty perceptive um, socially, despite the fact that we take a long time to mature. Mm -hmm. So I know, and I know this is funny. I know if a guy is taking me to a spot, he always goes to another with another girl. So I kind of, I'm like, oh, this is his place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like it when people think out of the box for a first date, do something a little bit different, you know? Um, taking me for drinks and trying to get me into bed cliche you know we've seen it a million times taking me on a really cool hike to a place i've never been before that's going to get my attention taking me to a small restaurant that's you know mom and pop place that's got you know um, really authentic food is more interesting to me than going to like macaroni grill right. um so to me i like um thoughtful things that introduce me to something new Mm -hmm. that's awesome the first day with my wife we went to the bookstore oh yeah and your so wife's I had to, an ISTJ I, so she was like all up in the history section surprisingly no actually no that's like the biggest thing that actually does not fit is she like does not do well with like dates and events and what century did that happen in like that's not she doesn't like that stuff but for me it was more of a test marker for myself like if she's okay with being at a bookstore while i just browse like the conspiracy theory section then we're gonna be on a good relationship and it, it was great and then we went to dinner afterwards i was like all right it was sort of like my test of like this is what i like to do so and an entp will always enjoy a good bookstore yeah no you're i you're very well read especially mbti and young so there's like that's legit that is another huge um, tip is work on reading speed if you're certain types, because uh, if you are curious and you can read fast, you can consume a lot. And yeah. it's fun. Endless knowledge. 
It's one of the saddest parts about my life is that I'll, I know I'll never read all the books I want. I know. It's, That's it, why I it, hope for more lifetimes. Slightly different question than the one I usually ask is, you know, if you were, if you were going on a long road trip with three other people in your car, what would those types be? So in thinking about this one, I f- it's like, in thinking about this, I feel, ha, 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 I was just <laughs> combining my um, introverted thinking and my extroverted feeling because yeah. my extroverted feeling does come out a lot on this one. My first instinct is an ESFJ. And that's because I travel well with them. I always have, for some reason, my ability to brainstorm and their ability to kind of figure out what everybody likes. They put together a fabulous agenda and like do most of the organization, but they take all my suggestions. So I always feel like a good ESFJ who's organizing the trip can be really handy. I'm gonna go with an INFP because I want mm. someone to read poetry <laughs> to me in the back seat of the car. <laughs> That's so weird. Out... Okay, no, I love it. Keep going. Ugh, I love brainstorming and chatting with INFPs. They're dialogists. Um, like an INFJ is a monologist. So they're going to just talk to me and tell me things for a long time, whereas I'm going to banter with my INFP. So I want, I want them on a road trip, I want a little more banter. Okay. And then I think for my final type, I'm going with the INTJ because that's my partner. And I do think that they make for great drivers um, because they like to speed a lot. Their SE comes out when they're driving and it can be really fun. And then I'm in this, I'm in this, the seat with the map and I'm like, here's where we go. And I like (laughs) figure out the routes and then he just zips to where I want to go. So I think that's my crew. It's a good crew. Because it's a lot different than like, I mean, I like, because I used to ask people like what, t- if you're building a team, who's going to be in your team? That's a much different question because it's like, there's an object. There's a, like, what am we're I trying building? to figure out. First what? of all, what am I, it's what am I building is my question or my answer there because yeah. uh, I would pick totally different people for totally different things. Do you have certain types that you find it takes more effort on your end to work with them? Not necessarily because it just, uh, typologically speaking, we know that there are certain types that are harder to work with naturally. What, what's it for you? Okay. I know when I go into, um, and I, what, what I've worked for a lot of ESTJs and ISTJs naturally because they fall into middle management positions. Mm-hmm. Um, I like working for them because they give me the discipline that I need, but then I find myself very overworked. Like I become a workaholic when I'm working for them because the rigor and the discipline they require doesn't, is too much time in the day. Like there's not enough time in the day. And that's one I find downside to sometimes those types of managers because they don't, they've never done it themselves. They're usually taking someone else's playbook and they're applying it to a team. And they don't realize that the necessary labor it takes to complete all the tasks they're requiring is more than the people have in their day, or they're going to require new efficiencies in order to scale. And they're not, they don't know how to create those new efficiencies. Um, I find that an INTJ or, you know, more of the end types will recreate the, the efficiencies and then they're going to go ahead and completely implement them. So I find that those types need to learn how to work with upper management on getting process changes that help. Like they need to learn how to grease wheels really well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like, that's where they have to kind of, so those types, it's not that I don't enjoy. It's more like I need to kind of, you know, sometimes it can be draining from me just from a time perspective. I find that ESFJs can be draining from a, from a, uh, (laughs) if I give an ESFJ a document, they will constantly comment and pick at it endlessly forever. So you have to give them criteria in which it's finished. Right. Otherwise it's endless. And like, I, I won't hit my deadlines. And my boss is like, and I have an INTJ boss. And he's like, why aren't you hitting your deadlines? And I'm like, the ESFJ won't stop commenting. <laughs> and he's like, you haven't learned to create criteria yet. So he's actually taught me how to, he's very good at, keeping the ESFJ who's brilliant, by the way, he's a CFO and he's brilliant and he manages uh, a team of brilliant people. Um, 
he does get in the weeds. Yeah. And it, oftentimes yeah. the INTJ is like, get the hell out of the weed. What are you doing in there? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. But you know, they're both brilliant and they both have so many pros that, you know, I'm blessed to work with both. Yeah. Of them. Now, one of this is a question that I just thought of um, because we've chatted before offline about this. So you, your industry is like um, you've, you're in the venture capital world, right? Yes. I work with, uh, I, I'm in business development and the channel I work with is in VC. Okay. So a book that I recently, recently finished was called Billion Dollar Loser. It's about WeWork and Adam Newman. And I just, there's always, there seems to be a trend with like ESTP, ESFP types tend to be entrepreneurs. And for better or worse, Adam Newman is definitely an ESTP. Yeah, that's um, right. That's, that was my, with, with like an ENFP wife who probably was like pushing the values and the woo-woo stuff. Right. That was my, that was kind of my vibe. Yeah. Um, and I'm just wondering like. To not type like we just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a vibe. So let's just say that that's, you know, his persona. Yeah. I mean. So that's, that's a persona that he projects to the world. So I, I always just like wonder, I don't really have a question here. I'm just sort of saying like, isn't it interesting how they they start to group themselves like, oh, this is like probably SP types in this entrepreneur. Like if you went to a like a Y Combinator meeting, you're going to get a lot of SP types. I just, maybe some NTs, but I feel like you'd overwhelmingly be like um, charismatic sellers. And, and just people that want to be on stage and talking. So is there anything wrong with that? I mean, just, does that, does that sound right? So that would be one of the personas. So there's several startup personas in terms of startup CEOs. One okay. startup persona is the sales guy. That's your ESTP. It's, it's like, you can almost, there he is, you know, <laughs> and that's a large percentage of entrepreneurs. Um, the second that you're going to get is the product guy. Okay. That's going to be your ISTJ, IS, maybe ISTP, uh, INTP, ENTP, um, INTJ could be mm. any of those types. Um, I'd say you, you actually see a lot in the ISTJ and INTP for some reason. I see those a lot. Um, in the third category, you have um, kind of more older management, maybe done it before, worked for several companies, but never was a CEO, but they're more of a serial entrepreneur type um, with a business background. Those are your NT types. So you kind of, those are the three groupings or product guys or business guys and your sales guys. And in venture, your VCs align to those three personas. You'll find that some, like, um, so Jason Kalkanis was um, a scout for Sequoia and he's an ESTP type and he loves that type. Like you, he worked with Travis at Uber. Oh. Um, he's working with a lot of those um, more salesy, flamboyant. You can tell that's what he likes to invest in. I have other guys who are more looking for product guys and it's mostly based on the VC's background themselves. Right. Most of the VCs, I have a personality tool, Crystal Nose, um, attached to my LinkedIn. Most, it, it does uh, disk model, by the way. They're supposedly integrating Enneagram and Myers-Briggs. Um, but the majority of disks for, um, for the VCs are D, DI, or DC. And like, that's it. They're all in that D quadrant. It's mm. pretty, cr and so, um, and I find that some of these same personality types kind of tend to be uh, the S, the SJs, S, you know, ST types are in the D quadrant um, as well. I mean, I don't know. There's some correlation. I don't think that there's, uh, it's the same. They're like uh, measuring the same thing. It's work right. persona. So I don't think it's all the same thing, but I do notice that there are a personality and I would say on the VC side, I see a lot of ENTJs, a lot of ENTPs. And I ask, I've asked a lot and there right. are a lot of, like I ask them and um, I'd say that ENTJ, ENTP, INT, like the NTs are pretty well represented in VC. 
like yeah Bree, it was great to talk to you I'm glad we got to do this um i will post where people can find you on linkedin so they can connect with you um but i appreciate you being here and hopefully we can do it again soon awesome thank you